Traditionally, there would be a trade-off between either high security with heavy inspections, which are time consuming, or a convenient travel port for passengers. But with the taxi system, you go beyond. Uh, it will be possible to guarantee high security with remote inspections without hindering the uh, continuous flow of passengers. So it's very important to detect explosives or weapons to prevent terrorist attacks. And the system is able to detect that and share the information with the police officer. The police officer may wear uh, smart glasses and if there is no weapon or explosive detected, nothing is presented on the smart glasses. But if a weapon or an uh, explosive is detected, then the information is shown on the smart glasses and the police officer sees a picture of the individual that was close to uh, the sensor. So the police officer is able to follow up and catch the suspect while he's still in the neighborhood. Currently, uh, we are in Rome, in one of the subway stations, and we are testing the complete taxi system. And there are volunteers participating in, the, in this experiment, and they can carry a weapon, they can carry traces of explosives, uh, and this allows us to test each component in the taxi system, and we can assess the quality of the system. And what we've seen up till now is that the system is performing very well. What I'm really proud of is that we set up the system in a very modular way and it's able to train itself in such a way that it makes it very flexible to be also installed at other locations. And the training strategy is such a way installed that we reach very high performance. So one of the good things of the Dexter program is that NATO allows us to work together with multiple people in the consortium. So there are experts coming in from multiple countries and working together. Experts on the field of radar, experts on the field of laser and optics, uh, experts on the field of video processing, and together we can build the Dexter system. Dexter is, is a project funded by the Science for Peace and Security Program. For us, for all the institutions involved in the project, has been a very big opportunity to work with NATO because uh, uh, NATO was the glue of uh, all the institution, was a point of reference for us when uh, uh, it was the moment to have a feedback from someone that works daily with the terrorist attack, with the threats uh, in the public spaces. So there has been um, a mutual collaboration, a, a steady exchange of knowledge between us and them. This project is an integration of three research projects, but also a system which has algorithms and integrating all the detection coming from the different sensors and coming up with alarms. And we are measuring today the false alarm rates and how successful the detection will be in different scenarios, which are picked up from actually real-time situations, unfortunate terrorist attacks which happened in the past and we will be able to come up with a data evaluation in the next coming months and this prototype then can be upscaled and become a real uh, possible uh, commercial product to be used in metro, airports and other mass transit environments. All the uh, different rules and legislations which are uh, decided by the European Union and other international organizations have been respected, including the privacy rule. So all this is integrated into our CONOPS, which is our operational uh, standard operation procedures. Uh, so we are proud to say that we have covered all these different privacy issues and safety, especially for eye safety, for laser. I would uh, like to uh, also show and demonstrate to this Science for Peace and Security project to the public at large that NATO does care about public safety and security and we try to build peace among scientists by bringing them together to work on specific projects like this uh, to make the world more safe.